Hey everyone, my name is James and welcome back to Chippy's Couch. So today, we're back for another round of Mage 35. The fables were true, the legends were correct. Mage 35 is back and I wonder what the title will be. I'll be real with you, I may have pushed it too far with the last one. Mage 34 was meant to have fancy small text. However, about 80% of people... They didn't really see it like that. They saw a little cube with a question mark in it. So it does kind of play into the meme a bit more, but it was unintentional. And at first, the video, it was not doing very well at all, right? YouTube was like, we're not sending this to people. Are you for real, James? It's got a question mark in it. But then after a while, people found it. They discovered it. So I don't think we'll be going that route again. But I do have an idea in mind. But regardless, welcome back. Hope you're all doing well, staying safe, and washing your hands, even with the lockdown being eased. It's super important. So I've been away for a little while. Uh, to explain it real quick, I just got Terraria Burnout. I started working on a project. <coughs> oh my god. I've hay fever today. So my throat keeps going. I've got a blocked nose. And I've also got itchy eyes. But no, I started working on a project for uh, for Chippy Gaming. You'll know this if you watch that channel as well. But uh, a cat deleted it, so I had to replay Terraria. And I, I put so many hours in Terraria in such a short amount of time, I was like, yeah, I'm done for a little while. So I beat Bioshock on the Switch, and now I feel like I want to play Terraria again. So that's all good. You know, that's a, that's a good sign. But I do apologize for the breaks, guys. I think it's just because with everything leading up until 1.4 and then... And then everything afterwards, you know, it, it's super easy to get a little bit of burnout. But I appreciate you guys uh, still being here and uh, and sticking around. It's good. So today's episode is going to be dedicated to the DOG. We've been fighting it for a couple of episodes now. And I think what's happening is I'm getting better at the DOG because, you know, I'm doing a little practice run every episode. But then the episode ends, I have a little break, and uh, and I'm back to being awful at it. I think I just need to uh, to dedicate the time to uh, to learning the, the pro strats again. So what I'm going to say is, if we don't beat DOG, the episode's not coming out. I always love this incentive. I've had this incentive with uh, bosses in the past, and I find it does really help, because I'm like, well, I want people to see what I'm up to. So then it's like a, a little bit of extra motivation. So you lot know I've been calling you The Boys. For, uh, for a few weeks now, I never really realized just how often I was saying it. It all started because of the uh, the kind of Reddit meme, you know, the boys. But I'm deciding to change it. I want to be more more inclusive. You know, I want to I want to represent everyone here. So now we are Couch Gang, right? And we're Couch Gang for life. Get it tatted. I don't care where you get it tatted on the neck, on the forehead, on the wrist. But we out here. We Couch Gang. Yeah, I think calling everybody the boys just seems a little off, especially knowing that we have, like, a good amount of, like, female uh, female audience, right? It just seems a little off. And I think new people are like, why, why are you calling me a, a boy? I think it's just very fun to say. But we couch gang now. We're moving past it. That's what we are. Couch gang. I love it. And I like it because if you want to be couch gang, you've got an item in Terraria to find. You know, if you want to, if you want to join the... The club. Couch gang. You gotta find the couch. Which I've only ever found once, so I don't know about that one. Okay, right. This is where it goes over me. So um, so I haven't been practicing while I've been away. Uh, I haven't been playing any modded Terraria. But I still really enjoy it, which is good. Like, when I come back to it, even after playing so much 1.4, I'm like, yeah, modded Terraria is the bomb. It's really, really good. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it so much. I do. Ooh. I wish I was better at the, the jumping part, though. I, I really do. I said this before, but it's so strange that with a fight like this, what I struggle with the most is um is is this. It's, it's just the jumping puzzle. And this boss is massive. You all know that. And I struggle with the with the jumping. So after the last episode, I did get some tips about old uh, old Duke. Apparently, it has an exhaustion phase. So at the moment where, um, where it's not moving as much, that's when it's exhausted. And what you're meant to do, the meta strategy, is to, uh, or the pro strats, is to actually um, use your rage and adrenaline then. I think for me, I don't even think I was 
I mean, I have to go back and look, but I don't think I was even getting to that point where uh, I had rage and adrenaline. Do you know what I mean? I think I wasn't that good yet. But I do want to beat old Duke, mainly just to see the items. But I don't have the willpower to learn a whole new AI, especially one that's similar to Duke, because I, I'm, I am still burnt out on, on the Duke. And it made me laugh as well, because I said that maybe old Duke has the best lore in Calamity. <laughs> and you guys were just telling me the lore is, he's old. He's just really old. God, don't you hate it when your lore is just you're really old. You know when the grandkids come to visit in the home? Like, oh, what did you get up to? Oh, I'm just really old. You know, I mean, just like in your life. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, just a bit old. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, you know, same old, same old. They should hire me to write Calamity lore. I'd be, I'd be pretty good at it. DOG, what can we say about him? Well, he's a long boy. Mechanical long boy. So you could say he was made by a fan of... I don't know where I'm going with this. All right. I, I was hoping to get a new job from this, but I already think I've been fired. <laughs> All right, let me use my uh, adrenaline here. Okay, so this is going well, but I know that I'm like kind of skirting by on some of these dodges, right, with this. I still don't think I've nailed the purple AI. I think the purple one is the one I, I mess up the most with. Okay, that's good. I don't know if you guys remember. Still calling you guys, by the way. Because <laughs> I'm really- I struggle not to say guys. I really should call you you lot. I know it sounds impersonal, but at least more inclusive. Um, when it goes to this black phase, this is when I really struggle because I can't tell the AI patterns. Oh, I actually did it. What? What? <laughs> what? I didn't expect to do it. I thought, oh my god. Did we- where'd the loot go? <laughs> I, I, I didn't even expect to do it. I thought we had like so much more to it. I was expecting like this killer phase. God, we died in that black portion like two times. Are you mental, DOG? Are you mental? Right. We got the... Uh... Doesn't it have a treasure bag? Or am I am I just mental today? No, no, it has a treasure bag. Where'd it go? i tell you what we should do. We should like put a marker down. I'm going to say here. Uh, you can't put torches on. I need to figure out where it died. Oh, thank God for the mini-map, dude. Oh, my God. Thank God. Nice. Because I was like, I'm going to have to figure out whereabouts in the world it was, and then just kind of look around. Well, there we go. I, I really wasn't expecting to, to be here like that. Oh, Pirate Invasion? Are you for real? <laughs> you want to show up after the DOG? These people are not Couch Gang. I just know it. I just know it. <laughs> It's such a weird, a weird transition. DOG, Devourer of Gods, eh, I don't know. Pirate Invasion. So I think what happens now is after DOG, we can, uh, we can do the Frostmoon event again, and then you get the Endothermic stuff. And I think with the Endothermic stuff, you make a, a good amount of mage gear. So I think maybe that'll be the, uh, the thing that we do next. Mainly because as well, I don't think I did it on boss checklist because I knew that we'd be doing the Endothermic part. Because you've got the you've got the ones from the pumpkin moon as well that you have to mash up, but I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Not I'm not actually too sure. Well, I think that's what we'll do though. So once the pirate invasion is done, we're gonna open up the treasure bag and stuff. And then we'll let that determine where we go. You know, the loot will decide what is next. I am genuinely just so buzzed to have to have beaten that. That is really cool. So yeah, going back to uh going back to earlier, what I said in the intro, yeah, I beat I beat Bioshock on Switch. So I don't know what I told you guys. I may have told you that I'd already beaten it before. Uh, I hadn't. I knew that there was a big plot twist in the game. Uh, because my friend told me many years ago, Oh, Bioshock's great. The plot twist at the end. Amazing. I didn't, I didn't want to tell anybody that I'd not beaten it. Because I was scared that people would just reference it casually. Not even to ruin it. Just to be like, oh, um, blah, 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 plot twist. It was good. What I will say is the plot twist was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. But... After the plot twist, the game kind of dragged. And then the boss fight at the end was the worst boss fight I've ever fought in a game. Like, the game is hard. Like, it's a survival horror game, for those that don't know. So you kind of like, you know, you're scavenging for loot. You know, you, you'll never find yourself with a full amount of ammo. So you've got to be careful with what you use. And then the boss fight is like, haha, I can be shot four times and then I'm dead. And you're like, really? Like, some of the splices in the game were harder than the boss. Oh yeah, we've, we've got Thorium. <laughs> so this is a uh, this is an accordion, right? Concord, wait, 
concertina. Concertina? Concertina. I, I know nothing about music in terms of instruments or anything like that. When I was editing the trailer with Chaos, he was like, oh, um, you want to put that in the... Uh, and he just named some fancy musical term. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, I could do that. Is that the wiggly line on the audio track? And he's like, yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, I just put my loot away. So, Devourer of Gods. No, wait, where did I put the lore? Um, oh, I'm in the wrong thing. Forgive me. Forgive me, gang. <laughs> Devourer of Gods. The serpent's power to assimilate the abilities and energy of those it consumes is unique in almost all known cosmos, save for its lesser brethren. I would have soon had to eliminate it as a threat had it been given more time and creatures to feast upon. Place in your inventory to boost the power of true melee strikes by 50%. However, due to your reckless nature, you will take increased damage. No thank you. Uh, we're going to dump that away because we don't need it. I keep using control and shift backwards now. I'm so used to, to 1.4. God, we got a lot of treasure bags in here. Should we open them up and just sell them? So we got Ogre, D-O-G. I'll sell them now because I know that I'm going to do this goofy thing where I open the bag up and go, Oh, wow, we got this. We got the, the brew blueprint from D-O-G. That's really cool. Come on, don't lie. You, you could all see it happening. Okay, so what did we get? We got Fab Salt summons an Alicorn. I thought... I can't remember, but didn't this have like a, um, oh, 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 right, this is it, this is it. I thought that was some kind of like rear drop or something like that, or something you only got, maybe it's just through doing Revengeance Plus, something like that. Man, the alley corn is great. I've never watched My Little Pony, but, um, you know, this might convince me. Nah, it's not. <laughs> I'm probably never going to watch My Little Pony, but it is cool. Like, I mean, the mount's cool. Very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, so what else did we get? We got the Nebulous Core. Summons a floating nebulous star to protect you. You have a 10% chance to survive an attack that would have killed you. Okay, not too interested in that. We got the um, we got the Eradicator. This is Rogue. So if we'd have finished Calamity Season 5, this would have been the next weapon then because we were Rogue in that. And then we got the Legendary Excelsus. Excelsius? Excelsus. <laughs> this is really cool. I love this. Like, if I was playing, uh, if I was playing Warrior, I'd think that was sick. Okay, so did I unequip this? I can keep that on. Actually, no reason not to have the uh, the, the My Little Pony thing. All right. Well, we've got a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff is being opened up here. So let's have a little look. We got the Asgardian Agis. So this is with Phantoplasm and the two of these. Now, I presume we can make the Agis. Like, I'm fairly certain we can make the Agis. Because I'm pretty sure it's... Yeah, it's the combination of these two. So, let's dump that in there and that in there. So, these two, let's do... Uh, was it five bars? Something like that? Agis. What was it called? Um, let's see. <laughs> Alright, Asgardian Agis. Can we make it? We might not have the Phantoplasm. That's the only thing. Asgardian Agis. No, we got it. I think it's had a new sprite. Looks great. Looks really good. It looks like it's actually from the DOG now. You feel me? Okay, so uh, this is the thing where you have Q that gives you the buffs that slow you down. Yeah, it's just it's just the combination of the two, isn't it? But it opens up an extra accessory slot, which is which is nice. So that's good. What else we got? Uh, Core of the Blood God. No. No, I'm alright for that. Dreyden's Heart. Now, Dreyden's Heart is something that I've made many a time. So that's probably something uh, we will make. So these are all rare drops. Um, and I don't know if they're rare drops in, in Revengeance mode only. So what's this called? Dreyden's Heart. Okay, let's see what we got in the uh, in the storage thing. So we're only missing the uh, stress pills. I'm surprised I don't have the stress pills. If I remember correctly, do they drop from Pixies? Or something of that, something of that, or, or is it a rare drop from, from treasure bags? This is all something that I'll get in the next episode, by the way, because I can always um, come back to this. You've got the Rampart of the Deities, or Deities, uh, and I'm pretty sure I've made this as well. Since we are using this, this just, this does seem like something we should, we should make. 
Uh, but do I have the frigid bulwark? Or can I make the bulwark? Okay, so the frigid bulwark is made from a paladin shield, a frozen turtle, and some cores of helium. Okay, well that's something we can farm for. You've got the Elysian Tracers. Now we have to make that because that's just too good of an upgrade, right? We've got to make the, the Tracers. So let's dump in uh, this. And how many bars was it? It was five. I kind of like having the um, the rest of them out and then only putting in what we need. Okay, so five of those. Tracers. Okay, Elysian Tracers. Nice. These are all so going to get reforged. <laughs> okay, so here's our new Tracers. Nice. Okay, cool. It's a, a good episode. I really like making upgrades. So what is next? Uh, the sponge. The sponge is iconic. Is that the mage one? No. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, God Slayer armor. All right. So this uses the endothermic and the nightmare fuel. So that's why we have to do that. I know that at least. Face Melter is a mage weapon. That sounds really cool. Um... I would make this. I'm pretty sure I have a Siren Song as well. I think it's the axe that I probably... I assume I probably don't have. Now, can you get the axe from the... Um, can you get it from the... Uh, blah, blah, blah. From an NPC or not? Or does it have to come from the treasure bag? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, does it come from the treasure bag? Or does it come when you kill it? Magical Harp. Magical Harp It would take two seconds to make. So I think I'm going to make this. Because uh, I will find an axe. Because I think if I even have plantera bulbs, I could just farm them out in like five seconds. Um, <laughs> oh, God. There's so much UI. Uh, the magnetic meltdown uses spectre staff, magnet sphere, and cosmolite bars. Magnetic meltdown. That sounds kind of cool. Fires a spread of magnetic orbs. There's so much to get. I think what we'll do then, yeah, for real... Um, I think what we do is we do the we, we do the two events. So let's have a little look on Bosch checklist. Just to show you guys, yeah, I skipped over Frost Moon. So we could do with a naughty present, which we can already make. It's a good feeling. It's a good feeling when there's already one there for you. It's pretty great. Okay, let's favorite these and then we'll dump the rest away. Alright, no, I'm gonna keep the drill containment unit on. Sorry, my little pony. Goodbye. <laughs> Okay, so naughty present. That's at night time, right? So we'll do daytime, night time, naughty present, lifetime. So even though, for those who have never seen Calamity before, you may be thinking, Frostmoon, really? Like, you've just defeated the DOG. So what they do is they actually buff this event up for this. Um, but if you get into a, a good routine, if you get the right weapon... You can actually farm this out really easily. Like, I remember there was one series, I think it might have been Rogue, where if I stayed in one spot and just continuously fired, uh, I was getting enough hearts from the uh, from the mini-bosses to, to survive. So, I think with this event, I think the trick is just try and get as much endothermic energy as you can, but then don't go crazy trying to farm it all out, because I think what you can do is you can make better weapons from, like, a little amount, and then when you come back to redo it, you know, you're not going to struggle as much. So I've just been like casually flying around, just trying to do what I can. So I'm sure by now you guys have, have probably seen or, or seen me tweet or seen a community post about um, about Felix mentioning the channel on his Terraria live streams. It's been amazing. Honestly, like one of the highlights of my entire career is him just kind of goofing on me. I really like it. Sometimes I know... You know, I know he's not British, but he does live in England. And he's lived here for a very long time. I know sometimes British sarcasm is, is hard to pick up on. Like, you should see me in a call with chaos. Sometimes he's like, are you joking? I'm like, yeah. But, you know, British, British sarcasm is very thick and very heavy-handed. So a lot of people are like, oh, do, do you mind him talking about you as if he doesn't like you? I'm like, yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's great. Because uh, he's not being serious. You know, he is kind of messing around. But, um... <laughs> I just I just love it. It is great. It's my favorite thing. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, the context, whenever, you know, something goes wrong in his in his live stream or he does something impressive, he just kind of clowns on me. <laughs> he just he just makes out that, you know, I can't play Terraria. I love it. I love it cuz it's obvious sarcasm. You know what I mean? It's just <laughs> I just, I love it. Sorry, I'm such a um god, I'm such a you know, yeah, Felix is great. I really like Felix a lot. Um, so, yeah, it, it's awesome. Um, 
And to be fair, I think anybody that knows me probably knows just how big of a deal it is for me. Yeah, it's great. Uh, so we got some endothermic energy, right. Well, let's see how much we needed then for, uh, for some of the components. Because this is going to open up a lot. Elemental gauntlet. Oh, I forget about this. You know what? It's funny because we used to get this in the original uh, series. Uh, but I never really clicked on it. It's kind of like Thanos-y. I guess it's not. I guess it kind of is. Nanotech. May. This brings me back. Brings me back to Rogue. Um. Okay. So we wanted to make the face melter maybe. God Slayer armor maybe. I think what we'll do is we'll farm out for this in the next episode. We could make dragon fruit. Dragon fruit would be pretty useful if we had the... Uh, Oh, wait, Dark Sun Fragment. So that is, that's post Yaren, right? So I guess we go, we go Face Melter then. I do have to get Nightmare Fuel as well. Yeah, I may as well get Nightmare Fuel and just kind of wing it out. How many, how many pieces do I need though? It's only 10? Yeah, that's not bad at all. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that then. Um, so let me see. Can I make the, uh, the Pumpkin Moon Medallion? I can. Nice. I said it earlier, but it's very satisfying to just be able to... Um, I'm going to put this on, by the way, because there's, there's no reason why we shouldn't. We've got a, a spare slot. Yeah, it's very satisfying when you can just make what you want to make. It's good. Oh. Oh. Right, okay. So to clear something up, I got a tip recently from um, from one of the, the people in the couch gang that you can quick stack money into a, a piggy bank. So I didn't realize, is this only a 1.4 thing? Because I was like, how do I not know that? And I've been playing Terraria for years. So I just tested it then and it didn't work. So yeah, I'm guessing it's a 1.4 thing. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. To be fair, when I when I got that tip, I was just like, oh, I was so confused by that. I was just kind of like, I'm surprised I don't know that, but I'm not really that surprised because there's so many things in Terraria, right? I clearly don't know. Like, in terms of all the YouTubers out there, I am by far not the best player at all. And I mean this in the sense of, like, on a practical scale, I'm not the best dodger. And even on a on a technical scale, I can't tell you about a lot of the technical stuff in Terraria. I'm a very casual player. So I did actually pick up a new game today. Well, it's a game collection. Uh, I picked up Borderlands for the Switch. And it's funny because at first I told myself, I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to wait until uh, there's a big sale on it. Mainly because I have played Borderlands in the past. Like, I played through, I'm going to say like half of Borderlands 1 on the Xbox 360 back in the day. And then I played a good chunk of Borderlands 2 and I really enjoyed it. And then I never played the pre-sequel. So at that rate, I'm just like, right, I'm going to wait for a, for a sale. And I did kind of a similar thing with Bioshock where they had the Bioshock collection... But since I'd already beaten Infinite and I don't want to play two, I was just like, yeah, I'm going to buy just the one um, and save a little bit of money. But then my friend's been messaging me all week. And he's like, so we gonna, uh, are we going to play co-op on, uh, on Borderlands on the Switch? Since he's a big Switch guy as well. I'm like, oh, no, I'm, I'm going to wait for a sale. I'm going to wait for a sale. And he's like, all right, I'll wait for a sale too. And then he messages me last night and he's like, well, I think I might pick it up tomorrow. And I'm like, all right, okay. So, uh, so I've got that downloaded. I'm really excited. I've never, I don't think I, no, I've never played any of the original free games in co-op. I played through a lot of free in co-op, but then I didn't have the time to finish it. I still haven't finished Borderlands 3. Borderlands is one of those games though where I don't really play it for the story. I just play it for the, the fun of playing it. So there are some games out there like if I don't finish the story, I'm devastated. Like if I didn't finish Bioshock, like what's the, what's the point? You know, it's a story game at the end of the day. But, um, but yeah, a lot of, like, shooter games, I just, I'm not even bothered, you know. Just don't mind at all. And I think that's probably the mentality of a lot of people that don't play Call of Duty campaigns. I don't think they make Call of Duty campaigns anymore, do they? I don't know. I don't really know much about Call of Duty anymore. So, I saw that they, uh, they rearranged the, um, PlayStation 5 reveal event to, uh, to the 11th of June. Anybody excited about that? That sounds kind of cool. I'm not really a, a console gamer, but I always have had, like, a, a console around because they're convenient. You know, you plug them in, you've got a controller, you know, that's it, right? I have a, a, a PC downstairs that I do use, but sometimes it's just such an inconvenience. You know, you've got to set up the mouse, you've got to do the keyboard, you've got to maybe change some kind of resolution, you've got to update something. So that'll be exciting. I don't know if I'll get one, but... 
I think when you're uh, when you're passionate about gaming, which I imagine a lot of you probably are, it doesn't really matter that you might not buy a PlayStation 5. Like, I, I know I'm not going to buy an Xbox, whatever it's called, but I still watch the event. I still get excited. I think it's going to be the same with the um, with the PlayStation 5. It's weird, though. Like, it makes me feel like such an old guy. Because I know there were gaming consoles before, you know, before I was around. But I used to have a PlayStation 1. And I had a PlayStation 1 when there wasn't a PlayStation 2. And it was great. I used to love it. I used to love Tony Hawk's on there. I used to love, um, there was a game about Bugs Life, the Pixar movie that was good. The first game I ever beat was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone on PlayStation 1. And I thought I was a genius. Let me tell you, right? All my friends at school couldn't beat Voldemort at the end of the game, right? Amateurs. Absolutely amateurs. They weren't couch gang. You had to wait until it was on the other side of the mirror of Erised and shoot through it. Nobody figured it out. I was the I was the champ. I was I was sharing it around like I was a game genie, you know? <laughs> Which was yeah, I, I I don't know. Man, it does make me feel old though. It does. Okay, so yeah, we're going for this. We're gonna make the magical harp. I think the magical harp will take me two minutes if I have a wizard. Do I have a wizard? <laughs> Is my wizard dead? Yep. Yep, he's dead. I'm going to go buy one from a different world if he's dead. Uh, only because I'm not waiting around for a wizard. Also, where is the person that sells the bulbs? Are they around or can I craft some? Bulb. I think there's probably... Oh, look at that. So why can't... You need a soul forge. Oh, is this a, a thorium thing? Yeah, I assume it is. Can we make a soul forge? Soul forge. It's made out of... Oh, it's an upgrade to this. Oh, we may as well make it then. May as well, if uh, if it gets us plantera bulbs. Because I'm not going to be using those thorium things anyway. Soul forge. Nice. Okay, great. Right, bulbs. Yeah, there's probably so many bulbs underground anyway. Okay, four bulbs. In four bulbs, we have to get an axe. And just to double check, do I have an axe? I do not. Okay. Well, let's go and buy a buff from you, my dude, from Greg. Um, and let's head there now. I like that because I've spent so many hours on this world. Um, you know, like, I, I, I kind of move between Terraria worlds a lot. You know, for Chippy Gaming videos, for Chippy's Couch videos. For Let's Plays, for thumbnails, blah, blah, blah. But I always like that my modded series, because I spend more time on them than I ever would a vanilla world, I get to really know them. Like, even now, I just kind of know my way around and I haven't been on this world in, in, like, two weeks. Really cool. God, I'm about to sneeze. I hate hay fever. It's just... I can moan about it all day, but I'm not gonna. But I could. It's annoying. I'm also slightly allergic to animals, which is... <laughs> Which is not great as well, because I love animals a lot. Alright, so we'll work our way through the four bulbs. And then what we'll do is we'll um, we'll move on to some of the natural ones. It's a rare drop, sure. But I don't think it's that rare. So did you guys know that you can get a special um, guitar in, uh, in Terraria 1.4? You have to kill a steampunker called Whitney. And if you do, I don't know what the percentage is, but you get her guitar from real life. Which is very cool. I like it a lot. It's a nice little guitar. I can't play any musical instruments, but I am jealous of people that can. Um, I would like to learn. It's definitely on the bucket list of things that I want to do. There are a few things I want to do before before I go, right? I want to learn a musical instrument. I want to get into really good shape at least once in my life. You know, that's, that's definitely a goal. That'd be pretty awesome. Um, what else? On my on my list of things to do in my life, right? I legit wrote down learn how to solve a Rubik's cube, and I did, boys. Oh god, I called you boys again. Couch gang. I did gang. Gang gang gang. <laughs> I'm gonna get used to it. A lot of people are like, why is why is he instilling violence? Why is he calling us a gang? We're a peaceful gang. Yeah, but I did. I learned how to to solve a. Why is there so many items? Line fours, please. I tell you what, Line 4's items are actually kind of sick. Nah, I'm going to keep that. I almost binned it, but... That is actually... 
That does actually look really good. I never realized how, um... So what's the shampoo for? I can't remember. I never realized just how good his set looked. Uh, can, yeah, can you get the axe from this? Oh, you, you can. Ah, right, okay. I don't know why, but I just assumed it was going to be one of those things that had to, to drop on. What is with the dev look? Look, we've got your your Eisels. Nice. Your Eisels, I am going to bin yours. Even though I do love you. Um, it's not for me. Uh, well, we got the axe. We can just leave the rest. I mean, I said I was going to sell other stuff, but I'm not... No, actually, I will sell it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not really that interested in money, but... We don't have the best stuff in the world. Okay. Uh, I don't need any of this. Yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna flog it. We're gonna flog it. Okay, right. I'm gonna go into my other world and I'm gonna buy one of the uh, harps from the wizard. So one thing that's not often mentioned by YouTubers is a uh, is builders workshop. And YouTubers don't mention it because it makes us look like uh, like dirty cheats. You know, once you open the door to cheating, how far is he cheating? But I use Builder's Workshop for thumbnails all of the time. Like, all of the time. I love it. And I just want to say, the Builder's Workshop people are probably not listening to this. But the new redesign of Builder's Workshop is fantastic. Like, I love it. For me, it's as, it's as useful as the Heroes mod. You know, when you're doing something in vanilla and you need to make a thumbnail, like hopping onto that, getting the right vanity, it's the best. I love it. Yeah, I think it's great. But YouTubers, we don't dare talk about it, right? Because it does. It makes us look like cheats. But, you know, you got to play Terraria how you want to play Terraria. You know, if I need something for a thumbnail, we're getting it. I know that you lot probably understand that. <laughs> but it's just, you know, it's just one of those things. Yeah, we just don't we just don't talk about it. Maybe we should talk about it more. Um, so, Magical Harp. I grew to love this weapon. And then I grew to hate it. I did. I thought this was the coolest weapon, and then I realized in 1.4, it's kind of garbage. Okay, uh, right, here's our Hallowed. Let's go to the Hallowed real quick. So, I know not everyone has Twitter or follows me on there, so I thought I'd mention this real quick. But I don't know if, you, if you've if you seen the video on Chippy Gaming about the um, the special colors of the weapons from the, uh, the Empress of Light. Well, um... <laughs> well, Red, the original creator of Terraria, he tweeted me and was like, all right, I'll give you custom colors. <laughs> we get Andy. That's his reference as I speak about him. He's ever watching, I swear. Um, but he said if I if I pronounce Terraria correctly once, I can have my own colors. And it was it was great. It, it just got turned into a big meme. It was a it was a good moment on Twitter. But yeah, I picked a red and gray. I can't wait. Like, it, uh, it, honestly, like. You know I love Mage. Mage is my favorite class in Terraria. So to have custom last prism colors, it's amazing. Yeah, I've always been jealous of the beta testers for it. <laughs> I've always I've always secretly wanted it, so it's cool. It was a good it was a good compromise, you know? Pronounce Terraria correctly just the once. It's not it's not too bad. Okay. Uh how many crystal shards did we need? I don't think it was it was that many, was it? Probably not. Okay, we can probably go back. We can probably go back and we can probably dump all this into there. And we'll dump that into there. And then we'll make the harp. So we'll make the magical harp. And then I think it was called the face melter. It was. What do I need? Oh, the axe. Okay, in it goes. It's legendary as well. Face melter. Okay, now I am really confused. What am I missing? Uh, I need a Draydon's Forge. No! <laughs> if I can't make a Draydon's Forge now, I'm going to be gutted. I've just been baited so hard. <laughs> Draydon's Forge. Oh, I can. Oh, thank. Oh, now I've got to make another... Damn it, Calamity. <laughs> now I have to make another Adamantite Forge. Okay, so what did, what did we need for it? We needed the Mithril and the Ancient uh, Lunatic Thingy Madoodle. So, Thingy Madoodle, Mithril Anvil, that's off in there. And then, let me get into there. Then we make the Forge. <laughs> I was so good then. I was like, really? After all that time? You're going to play me like that, Calamity? Uh, Face Melter. All right, cool. So, I've got no idea what this does, by the way. 
It says, Woo, fantasy world. I would scream that, but my, my throat's kind of sore. Finds musical notes. Right click summons an amplifier that shoots towards your mouse. Oh my god. What do you guys think? Do you think it's one of the worst sounding weapons in the game? <laughs> so you put down the amplifier. It's like a stationary summon. And then as you click, it will fire as well. So what is that? That's in the 49,000 range. And this is in the 18,000 range. Let's see if we get it up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get it real close and bring the colored beams down. So it definitely beats out what we had before, right? Yeah, it does. So let me just real quick try DOG. And see if we can notice a, a damage increase. It seems like I'm moving too fast away from the, sum the amplifier. Because look, I place it down. Oh no, now it works. Oh, this is really cool. It sounds obnoxious, I won't lie. But, um, but in terms of a weapon... Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I think the damage is decent. If you're really close, it clearly does a lot more. Because it takes a little while for the, the waves to catch up, the little notes. But it seems like you could almost do a, a running path for it to, to run into. Because they linger behind for a, a good amount of time, don't you think? Yeah, that's, that's really cool. I like it a lot. It's good to pick a weapon myself and just go, Alright, we're working on that. So, I don't know if it's like the largest upgrade in the world... But, it's definitely better than what we had. So I think... Oh! Oh, that is amazing. I love that. I didn't know that was a thing. So if you defeat the DOG once, when you go to do the refights, you don't have to fight the, the free things in the middle. Thank you, Calamity, for that. Seriously, that is a game changer. That just makes farming out... I love that. I don't know how long that's been a thing for. That could have been a thing for months now. I just had no clue. That is great. Yeah, thank you, Calamity. Because, I, you know, I've been moaning about it for a while. So, um, so that does make it better. So you have all the free things when you're learning how to fight it. That's the challenge. But on the refight, it's like, nah, we're, we're cool. Yeah, big up Calamity for that one. That's a, a wicked change. Like I said, it could have happened two years ago at this point. Probably did. Knowing me, it probably did. Okay. So yeah, this does feel better. It does. We did need to refight it anyway for the God Slayer armor. So, um, so this is a, a good opportunity for that. Surprise the, the laser beam phase. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Doesn't matter what weapon you give me. I'm still going to fail at this uh, jumping portion no matter what. All right, there we go. DOG defeated second time. All right. Let's see if we get any any difference in, uh, in items. So we got the kitty cat's head. Thank you for the support. Well, thank you, kitty cat. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Alright, let's go back home. So we got the Ruthless Obliterator. So this is the yo-yo. Uh, we got the Nebulous Core, which we already have. Got the Sword, which we already have. But I think most importantly, we got uh, we got Cosmolite Bars, and they're going to come, uh, come in pretty big. So I think that's going to round it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I, I really appreciate you guys being so patient as well with this series. Uh, but you lot have always been very understanding. So, uh, so you always get credit. Big shout out to all the members rolling by on screen right now. Your support has definitely made this crazy situation a little bit more stable for me. Like, I really appreciate it. It's nice to know that I have you guys helping me out each and every month. Thank you. So I hope you enjoy your shout out. Right? Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.